So here we have the 3-400 Z from 1962. The date code is 6250. And here we have a 3-500 Z. Uh, date code 8739 and uh, I've got a 3-500 installed in the Loudon Boomer amplifier currently uh, which was on the other video and uh, it shows um, a date code uh, 8451 now as I mentioned the uh, chimney that supplied with the original 3-400Z design was not an iMac chimney. It was made by H.S. Martin and Son, which is a chemical supply company that makes test tubes and glassware. So, unfortunately, the um, diameter of this chimney is only uh, 3.92 inches, whereas the SK406 and the SK416 are uh, 4 inches. So, the different diameter of the chimney necessitated changing the clip spacing that uh, secure the uh, chimney to the chassis. And uh, that was done by removing the old clips and then screwing down three new homemade clips, spring clips, fingers, and it works very well. Uh, Height-wise, there's no problem. The, uh, the Loud and Boomer has a recessed tube socket, so that's fine. Now, the height of the original 3-400Z uh, is 5 and an eighth inches and the three the three dash 500 Z is about five and seven eighths inches so the tube still is recessed below the chimney height I'm using a low profile plate cap but anyway uh, it seems to be working just fine so let's just uh, check the uh, idle current So we have 40 milliamps. Now this is with the 150 ohm cathode resistor um, that is used as an idle bias when you're not actually transmitting. So this is in the standby condition. And the plate voltage is uh, over 3000 right now because there's no load on it, really. Now, if I key up with a zero drive, just key up so that the relays operate. This bias increases to about 140 milliamps and uh, this is of course zero bias at uh, just a little over 3000 volts and it shows a very little orange color. It's still well in the dissipation ratings. Now if I actually apply drive Now that should be approximately full drive right there. 150 milliamps grid, 350 milliamps plate. Okay, let's check the dip, make sure it's still resonant. That looks just fine. So yeah, about 110 milliamps grid current and 350 milliamps plate current. And the voltage is about 2800. The meter reads low because the uh, series 5 mega ohm resistor is a little higher by 10%. So I'd say that's about 2850 volts at 350 milliamps. So uh, it's running a, a close to a kilowatt input. And again, it's just a, just a reddish color, really. Actually, uh, nice. So there you have it, the Loud and Boomer amplifier with a 3-500 modification.
now we will test the output power. Close to 700 watts output. Now this is CW under single sideback conditions because of the uh, power supply regulation. The peak voltage before it falls to 2850 volts will probably be close to 3000 volts. So it would be about 1100 watts input and probably 750 watts PEP out. Between 700 and 750 would be my estimate. So this is more power than we got with the 3-400Z from 1962, which I suspect the tube is a little bit weak, but uh, it's still totally usable. Produced between 500 and 600 watts output. So, uh, and, but it's not available. So that's why I did have to put this 3-500Z modification into the amplifier, which is basically the, uh, the chimney clips. That's the only modification required. Grid current, your plate current, and your output power. So it seems to be working just fine. Loud Boomer, Holocrafters HT45, linear amplifier.